CEO of the Agricultural Research Council, Dr. Shadrick Mwibuli. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. Um, Chairman of the Board of the Agriculture Research Council, Professor Sbusiso Vilinkomo, Board members of the Agriculture Research Council, uh, the Chair of the Global Forum for Agriculture Research, um, Mr. Juan Lucas Rustrepo, the representative of the Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, the Director General, Mr. Motima Manya, the Chair of the DGs of the CGIAR, uh, Dr. Martin Croft, the CGIR of the, the CEO of the CGIR Consortium, Dr. Frank Reisberman, the CEO of the uh, uh, Food and Agriculture Natural Resources Policy, Poli Policy and Analysis Network, Dr. Lindiwe Majele Sibanda, uh, heads, uh, the head of the fisheries of aquaculture uh, of NEPAD, Dr. Diop, uh, heads of institutions, the Assistant Director General of the FAO, uh, senior managers, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. We greet you all on behalf of the Agricultural Research uh, Council. Tonight, we are uh, essentially starting a journey together. And in starting a journey together, I think it is appropriate as the CEO of the Agricultural Research Council uh, start with a few remarks myself. For those of you who don't know who the Agriculture Research Council is, we are a national public entity that is established in terms of the Agriculture Research Act of South Africa. It is, of course, a science institution uh, that conducts research with partners, develops human capital, and fosters innovation in support of the agricultural sector. The board of the ARC is as you may have already figured it out, the accounting authority in terms of Public Finance Management Act. So if I didn't mention them, I would, be, I would have lost my job by tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the board provides leadership and, it, and oversight on the strategic direction uh, so as to enhance the shareholder of value uh, and ensure that the ARC's long-term sustainable development uh, direction and growth directions are fulfilled. It is, of course, as with any organization, supported by uh, management to ensure that uh, all the policies uh, and instruments, that uh, decisions that they make are properly implemented. As the Agriculture Research Council, we believe that over the years, the research of the Agriculture Research Council has continued to impact on agriculture and the related sectors significantly, particularly through the effective dissemination of scientific knowledge uh, as well as uh, de delivery of the relevant technologies to the agricultural sector. It is, of course, our hope as the Agriculture Research Council and our expectation but that by so doing, the work of the Agriculture Research Council uh, continue to influence people's thinking, the economic performance, and the sustainability of agriculture. The ARC ensures that its research outcomes Research results and publications are also translated into technologies and products that have pr practical value, both for commercial and non-commercial farmers and to all the users of the information and the technologies. It is uh, therefore important that we ensure that the ARC continue to do that for the sustainable development of South Africa. However, we are also keenly aware that the impact of the ARC's research and development extends well beyond the national borders of South Africa. Accordingly, the partnerships, uh, engagements, exchange of information and technology and capacity building uh, throughout the world have also become critical for the Agriculture Research Council, for it is because of these that we are able to succeed in delivering on our main mandate. Accordingly, we would like to take this particular opportunity to ensure, to, to indicate to all those that are gathered here that we work fairly closely with all partners that are gathered in this room. In particular, we would like to mention the CADESA, which is a regional body for SADC, uh, and, as in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in FARA, 
which represents the whole, the, 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 the continent, and of course through the Global Forum for Agricultural Research. We know, ladies and gentlemen, that agricultural research is critical towards ensuring food and nutrition security for all. And as a primary industry, agriculture often has an economic multiplier effect with significant impact on job creation, improved livelihoods, competitiveness of uh, enterprises, sustainable growth, rural development, and social st stability. According to the UN Millennium Development Goals report, in the last 30 years, investments in agriculture research and development have contributed to re reductions in the number of people living in extreme poverty, and this was achieved despite increased, the increase in the global population by, by more than one billion in the same period. We also know, ladies and gentlemen, that in the same time that we're talking as we're gathered here, about 800 million people are estimated to be suffering from chronic hunger and malnutrition. In our own country, South Africa, it is estimated that 10 to 15 million people are suffering from chronic hunger and malnutrition. Many of these people live in rural areas and depend on food from small-scale farming and market systems. The global population is also projected to increase to 9 billion, which means demand for food will increase by more than 50% over the next 15 years. We therefore cannot waste time and we need to begin to deliberate on how each and every one of us must contribute towards the sustainable production, productivity of food for all. It's against this backdrop, ladies and gentlemen, that we, the ARC, the Agriculture Research Council, and the government of South Africa uh, decided that it is an appropriate time to host this particular meeting. And we welcome you all with this particular theme that says, no one should be left behind, and let's explore how the agri-food innovations can be used to contribute towards sustainable food system. I thank you, those are the few remarks coming on behalf of the Agricultural Research Council. Now that I've earned my income, I can at least start being the MC for the evening. How's that? Ladies and gentlemen, um, allow me to uh, uh, welcome to the podium uh, the representative of the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Mr. Senzen Izokwana, uh, who is unfortunately unable to be here tonight, uh, but he's ably represented by his most senior uh, official, the Director General for the Department of Agriculture, Mr. Moti Mamanya. Good evening. If you were to ask me why this podium, not that podium, I wouldn't know. I, I obey the rules. A gentleman who died and went into the other world, I'm told, and he found there was a long queue. He was a gentleman. Uh, there were actually two queues, one very long, with a notice up there that says, those who have not been dominated by their spouses during their lifetime, that queue was very long. There was a very short queue of those who were not dominated by their spouses, and this newcomer was interested, he wanted a, a short queue. I always say, I suspect he was a South African, because we like very short queues. And he asked the gentleman who was standing on the short queue, say, how did you manage to come to this short queue? He said, do you think I know? My wife just told me to stand here. <laughs> Program director, Dr. Shadrach Mepudi, the chairperson of
the ARC First Council, the chairperson of the Global Forum on Agricultural Research, the executive secretary of the Global Forum for Agricultural Research, the DGs of the, the CGR centers who are here, the representative of the chief executive officer of the NEPAT planning and coordinating agency, the CEO of the Food, Agriculture, Natural Resources Policy Analysis Network, the heads of the agricultural research centers, both within and those who came from other countries, and the colleagues from various uh, government agencies. Good evening. I must start by apologizing, as Dr. Mwepwidi has indicated, Minister Zokwana would have loved to be here, but you would know that we are a very busy country. If you ask the media, they will tell you that they've chosen to make us uh, the focus of their content. I'm sure you know that. It gives me pleasure and honor just to welcome all of you to the Republic of South Africa this evening, where the third global conference on agricultural research for development is hosted. As you're all aware, the first conference took place in France in 2010. The second conference was held in Uruguay in 2012. And therefore, the honorable guests making the third conference, the first of its nature, to take place in Africa. And we would want to thank you for coming to South Africa. Africa is celebrating tonight the honor bestowed on her to host this conference where great minds from the agricultural research and innovation come together to dialogue on development needs of the world. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it is appropriate and fitting for me to thank the Global Forum for Agricultural Research and the consultative group on international agricultural research for partnering with our Agricultural Research Council and making this conference happen in the Republic of South Africa. Like the rest of the world, we are facing the pressures of the economic downturn. We are going through climate variations and changes like uh, the rest of the world. As part of the SADC, we are facing the devastating drought but we must still live, we must still feed our nations, we must still feed our growing populations. We must still look forward to reducing the number of people who are exposed to both poverty and hunger and assure our people of food and nutrition security. And therefore, you'd agree with me, we need to be smarter in our solutions, we need to be smarter and innovative and I believe that research and innovation would provide such options and such hope. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, the government of South Africa, through the National Development Plan, has directed that the agricultural sector, amongst others, should uh, create at least one million jobs by 2030. And amongst other things, we need to expand our production uh, through irrigated agriculture. We need to grow the smallholder farming sector to 300,000 members and reduce the hunger, the food insecurity. All of this should be informed by evidence generated from research and technology options. And we believe that this conference is an important event for us to draw lessons from and ensure that research and innovation remain relevant and address the development needs of our national system. The Global Conference on Agricultural Research for Development enables the world to convene and position agricultural research and innovation system to be able to meet the development needs of the world. And this conference should also act as a platform for creating 
effective targeted investments, partnerships, and capacity building for agricultural research system. It is an opportune time to renew contacts, discuss problems of mutual interest with delegates from around the world for the transformation of agriculture and poverty alleviation. It is satisfying to know that the theme of the conference, as indicated, no one left behind, agri-food innovation and research for sustainable world, reiterate the six-point plan as outlined by the roadmap developed during the first global conference, emphasizing an inclusive priority setting, equal partnerships, increased investment, improved capacities, improved development impacts, and better communication of the achievements. The chosen theme of this conference is testimony that research and innovation require collective efforts and partnerships to deliver the catalytic results on increasing productivity and competitiveness of the sector, which therefore lead me to agree that agricultural research and development and the adoption of technologies are cornerstone for reviving agriculture, which can only happen when enabling an environment for research to play the role is created. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the themes for the parallel sessions are also a stepping stone to create resilient farming systems in the wake of climate variability, such as drought, that is currently facing the farming community. And I would want to say that the rest of the, the community is saying we need answers, we need solutions, we need the partnerships to help us map a way forward in these uh, difficult times. And as you deliberate, as a country, we're ready to share lessons, showcase our research and development systems to the participants of this conference uh, through our Agricultural Research Council Day that is scheduled for the 7th of April at our Rue de Platte campus. And I believe you will find this very useful, very enriching for the conference delegations as the new facility would be opened, which would continue to get to add value to our research system. Perhaps you can identify during that uh, some partnership possibilities. We are looking for more partners. And I'm aware that, and I'm informed that at least 500 delegates from scientific and social communities will deliberate on the transformation of agri-food research and innovation systems to ensure the impact and the sustainable development. And it is expected that by the end of the conference, the conference pledge for sustainable development would be available where yourselves will commit to taking action for delivering on the sustainable development goals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to South Africa. And I'm inviting you to enjoy, to tour this country. It cannot be research, research, research until you leave. Please tour the land where Nelson Mandela was born, where Nelson Mandela was bred, where Nelson Mandela led, and where he has been buried. Enjoy our rich and diverse culture. Welcome to South Africa, and I thank you. Thank you, TG. And those were the words of the, of, of the minister uh, giving us the marching orders. And when he's talking like that, it just reminds me of some of the jargon that some of us as senior officials sometimes say to politicians when we are briefing them. So when he was talking about us coming up with solutions for, for the drought and so on, I remember recently, and my colleagues will testify to this, um, we were briefing um, uh, parliament um, on the effect of drought and the inability of the cultivars to perform. Um, then when it came to question and answer, 
uh, one of the members uh, had written his question and he then said, who is this cultivar? I'd like to meet him. So my colleagues just kept nudging each other, afraid to answer the question, and they all looked towards me to see if I was going to answer the question. So I waited until tea time, and at tea time I went and whispered, at he, whispered to him, and I said, cultivar is not a person. It's just one of those varieties, plant varieties, that actually we develop one of the technologies. And he, he just said, oh, I knew it was something complex. And that was the end of it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome on the stage um, uh, Mr. Juan Lucas Restrepo, the chair of the GFA Steering uh, Committee. He will be followed by Dr. Martin Croft, who is the chair of the Director General of the CGIAR. Thank you, Shadrach, and good evening to all. I will skip the introductions because I was given only two and a half minutes uh, and to focus on a, on a few words first. Uh, welcome all, and it's amazing to see farmers, civil society, NGOs, researchers, uh, of course, the CGIR uh, government officials from all around, the uh, funders, donors, uh, present uh, here. So it's very promising, uh, a very promising uh, three days that we have uh, ahead. My first message is to, to share with you that uh, in this same uh, place, uh, an hour, an hour and a half ago, we finished uh, the first partner assembly of uh, the GIFAR. Uh, about 100 partners met and we updated our charter, we devised a new governance that will make sure that we here will have a sustainable forum that will represent the voices of many and in order to fulfill the needs of farmers around agri-food uh, innovation systems. The second message is that this conference is critical for that process. This conference uh, is becoming, this G card is becoming a process. Uh, the venue is important, meeting for a few days to confirm, to discuss, to challenge issues is critical, but it's not enough. We need to maintain a permanent discussion where we are able to bring the voices from the regions, the needs, the new, uh, the new issues to make sure that whoever needs to respond, responds. That the CGIR through the CRPs, that other institutions, that governments, this is a voice that, of course, influences decisions on research, but that it's more about development and the farmer and sustainability and what happens uh, in the future. Uh, and finally, uh, it's my, I, I need to thank uh, the organizers, beginning, of course, with the government uh, of South Africa, uh, their Agricultural Research Council. Uh, I met a few researchers last night that have not done so much research during these past months in order to make sure that this conference uh, was uh, perfect. I need to uh, also thank the, the program uh, organizing committee, the, the different task forces, uh, and, of course, the CJIR uh, and GFAR secretariats and consortium uh, for making it, this happen. So thank you so much. Enjoy the meeting. Provide input, uh, and we assure you that that input will be taken into account in our organizations. Thank you so much. DG Mortimer Manga, President Shadrach Mupuli, Chair of the GFAR Steering Committee, Juan Lucas Restepo, um, and all other protocol observed. Just to keep it short. But ladies and gentlemen, Dumelang, Sami Bonani, Goeienach, just good evening is the easiest, I think. 
but it's good to remember that we're here in South Africa, and I'm very proud that we have this next meeting on this continent where so much is going on and is happening and is going to happen in the future. So, welcome to this third global conference on agriculture research for development. Uh, on behalf of the CGIR, uh, as representatives of the, of the DGs. Uh, I'm DG of CIMIT since eight months, and uh, uh, I'm allowed to represent all the centers. We are teaming up very well these days, and uh, we are going through a very interesting stage, and that's why this meeting is also so very timely. But first of all, I would like to thank, of course, Dr. Mark Holderness and the GFR team, Frank Reisbeman of the consortium office and his team, and Shadrach Mupuli of the Agriculture Research Center as local organizer, the GCARD organizing committee, and the task force. Please give them a big hand, thanking them for organizing this. <laughs> to be honest, it's a wonderful setup here. It's great that we can meet us, uh, ourselves in this wonderful environment. Now, I had the same words actually, GCARD is not just a meeting but a process. It's ongoing, it's ongoing, now we are meeting with all the teams, but in all the continents we meet together. Uh, until eight months ago I was chair of AFART, which is also part of GFAR. Very, very important that we bring those results here together to strengthen partnerships and accelerate the impact of our research. Three years ago in Uruguay at GCARD 2, uh, the Agriculture Research for Development community committed to transforming our sector by strengthening our partnerships, continuing the reform of the CGIR, that was the last reform. Right now we are in a new reform. Keep on going, but still going strong in the science, and that's very special. Continuing the reform of the CGIR, aligning our goals to those of the G8, G20, and of course right now we have the SDGs, making this all very special. And of course, especially the teaming up between the CGIR and GFAR. Very important for us as CGIR, so thank you also for co-organizing this uh, with us. The CGIR's strategic results framework, as we call it the SRF, uh, is a direct result of this process and the discussions with the donors. Change doesn't happen overnight. Since 2015, GCAR 3 has been focused on stakeholder and partner engagement asking people directly to help the CGR vision for agriculture research and innovation for development to develop that jointly. And we got a lot of response of all of you and all of those people that could not attend this meeting. So consultations were held around the world and GFAR really helped also in getting sometimes very critical comments, but we want that as CGIR because we are a very special organization with a special niche organizing partnerships in uh, agricultural research for development. So many of you got involved in national priorities and the challenges facing agriculture in your countries and in the regions. Now collectively, we have made strides in the last few decades to pull millions out of poverty. Something really happened. And we have proof, we have evidence. For example, this week there will be a new wheat impact study coming out. So, and as a freshman in the CGIR, before I was for 10 years in Wageningen a University, I must say I'm very impressed by what I see happening in terms of research impact of CG centers together with national systems, together with advanced centers uh, all over the world. Based on current crop yields, feeding more than 9.5 billion people in 2050, and even more in 2100, will not be a trivial task. Many people outside our domain think that it's just economy. But we all know in agriculture research that it's not that simple to raise the yields. In some areas, maybe yes, through better sustainable intensification, but at the world scale, it's a major challenge. The increase in yield will have to happen while using fewer nutrients, less water, less land, and it will have a crucial impact on food security, the environment, and livelihoods across the globe. Food system shocks may come in. The insurance companies are getting excited. I just visited Lloyds of London. They are really interested because they see food shocks becoming a major uh, effect, food system shocks on stock markets and, and just name it. And we see it happening now. Here around in Southern Africa and the different countries, major problems are happening in terms of drought as a result of the El Nino. So major maize yields uh, and other crops are completely gone. 
So we need to create opportunities for women and young people and to solve the pieces of that puzzle, improve the nutrient content, nutritional content, and the diversity of food as well. Help farmers adapt and mitigate climate change shocks, but it is, and you just mentioned it as well, it's about the livelihoods of the people. So when we talk, for example, about rice, when we talk about maize, when we talk about other crops, in the CG also we realize that we integrate the systems approach and that we work for the livelihoods of the people uh, in these environments and especially the smallholder farmers. Now the core of the CGIR is formed by the 15 centers. 10,000 people, 10,000 staff working on this, but still it's small. If you look at the size of the problems that we have together, this is just a small number of people, so we have to team up. We have to team up with the advanced centers, we have to team up with the national centers in all the regions, uh, and we have to team up also with the development organizations, with the World Bank, African Development Bank, NGOs. Uh, basically, and that is also what the CGI has as a special niche, presence everywhere, doing good research, teaming up with all those partners, making sure that knowledge is used for improving livelihoods of people, together with the, on, on the agenda, together with the national systems. It's a major challenge, but special and unique. Uh, we have also the opportunity to collectively resources to help farmers achieve higher yields, of course, and incomes, and sustainability in farming systems in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. On all the three continents, there are issues. And it requires this close partnership with an array of institutions to develop and deploy new technologies, including climate smart uh, germplasm, promote adaptation, um, improved uh, management of the natural resource base, very important, and to digitally connect all farmers to innovation and recommendations based on global knowledge. The challenges are enormous. Two weeks ago, I was in Nepal. Farmers that didn't have even light bulbs in their houses, they have a smartphone. They are using apps for optimizing their fertilizer applications. So we are really having a lot of new opportunities to reach smallholder farmers in many different ways. Now, given these circumstances, GCAR 3 is more than just a time to celebrate our achievements. Sometimes you have to celebrate them. We will do that at Simit because we are 50 years old, but we have to look ahead because the challenges are out there. So let us come together, prepare for the challenges uh, to be addressed in the future, such as natural resource depletion water in many areas, groundwater tables go down with one meter a year. How are we going to solve that problem? Climate change, food demand situation 2050. So the next phase is challenging and exciting. And within the CGIR, and many of you have been involved, we designed the SRF, Strategic Results Framework. We designed a portfolio, a coherent portfolio of consortium of CGIR research programs, CRPs, an enormous amount of work, especially also of our partners and CRP leaders, but they have been submitted last Friday. So if you see some people tired walking around here, then you know why it is, because they have been working day and night to finish those proposals together with all the partners. But I think we have a very nice set of proposals, and this can be a very good moment to link up everybody with this nice portfolio of research of the CGIR with all its partners. So we are ready for quantum leaps in research, I think. And uh, we as CG uh, are very proud to be part of this effort. Um, and uh, it's great to team up with GFAR, of course, and together our efforts can make a difference to the lives of the one billion people on less than $1.25 a day and more than 800 million people who are ac acutely and chronically undernourished. Many people don't realize that. That's an everyday's problem. People focus on the problems that are visible and politically high, uh, highly visible in that sense, but this is also a major problem of today. It's not just a problem in 2050. And let's make sure that we uh, communicate that message everywhere to the donors, uh, because we spend annually $200 billion in subsidies for fossil fuels. CGIR is not even $1 billion. Food security is, I think, to be honest, way more important than energy. Energy is important, 
but food security is number one. So let's make sure that we convey that message and that all together, advanced centers, CGIR, national centers, development organizations, NGOs, and governments, of course, that we can do that together. So on behalf of the CGIR, I wish you a productive conference. Um, and myself as well, because I will be here the whole week, because uh, this is a really important event, I think, and I hope this will give a, really an extra boost to our joint new portfolio of consortium CRP research programs. Thank you very much. Sani Bonani, Dumelang. Only a Dutchman can come to South Africa and say that. Uh, only because they've been here more than 100 years. Um, Martin, thank you very much for those few words, and we, we really highly appreci ap 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 appreciate them. Um, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce uh, to the, our next speaker, who is going to give, a, give us a keynote address, Dr. Hamadi Diop, Head of Fisheries and Aquaculture Program for the NEPAD Agency. Good evening. Uh, tonight I bring greetings from Dr. Ibrahim uh, Asan Mayaki, uh, CEO of the NIPAD agency who could not be with us. Uh, he, asked, he has asked me to thank you uh, for giving uh, the NIPAD agency's opportunity to address this August audience. Uh, Mr. Mortimer Mania, Acting Director General, Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries of South Africa. Mr. Juan Lucas Restrepo, Chair of the GFAR Steering Committee. Mr. Martin Croft, Director General and National Maize and Wheat Improvement Center. Mr. Shadrach Mwefuli, President and CEO, Agriculture, uh, Agricultural Research Council of South Africa. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm greatly honored to be invited to be with you at the start of highly valuable gathering of the distinguished mind in agriculture research. I will come back on the specific of, this, uh, of the importance of this gathering. For now, I would like to underline the importance that the NIPAD agency attach to science and innovation. This is reflected in the agency's mandate to champion implementation of Africa's science and technology, consolidated plan of action, CPA, which aims to put science and innovation at the core of development planning and pursuit of sustainable economic growth and inclusive development. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I do Note that the conference is happening at the very peak of a two years, an inclusive participatory process and an opportunity designed to help shape the strategy and future direction of international agriculture, agricultural research and innovation in setting a new agenda for agricultural research in development, a new pathway for uptake this is important for several reasons, and I want to highlight three of them. First, ensuring research is aligned to and responsive to demand is critical and simply non-negotiable. The research agenda at any level should be driven by the political aspiration as articulated in national, regional, and continental or even global development plans. This led me to the second point. Over the last two to three years, some globally significant processes were undertaken leading into the endorsement of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and the COP21 
Paris Agreement. Both these global agreements have profound interaction with agriculture and food systems. At the African level, we have ushered in Agenda 2063 and the Malabo Declaration on Agricultural Transformation a renewal of member state commitment to the CADEP vision. These decisions and agreements reflect resetting in national and global priority and therefore directly impacting on what should then be agricultural research agenda. I believe the consultations were able to engage on these aspects. Three, there is a growing number of significant shifts in key development parameters, including those directly impact on or impacted by agriculture. Such factors and trend include climate change, instability in global financial market, and the rapidly growing advent of ICT, especially access to and use of mobile phones. This demand more regular review, not just on what research is done, but also how the research is done. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm therefore happy, expecting that this conference will validate and set in place a demand-driven and a national agricultural research agenda and research strategy. I would like, at this stage, also to raise a related issue. Expressing demand is a capacity issue. Therefore, ensuring demand, a demand-driven agricultural research agenda should include ongoing systemic interaction with especially the national research systems. And a national agricultural research agenda should include inherent strategic work to empower national research systems. It is important that national agricultural systems are working inside national development agenda. They should be integrated to the CADEP systems and national investment plans. The national political ambition and related agenda and priorities as articulated in the national agricultural and food systems security investment plan should be the starting point for an, agri for an agricultural research agenda. Level two in the CADEP Resolve Frameworks, as endorsed in the Malabo Declaration on Agricultural Transformation, highlights four priority goals in terms of, Afri uh, uh, in term of ag Africa's agricultural transformation agenda. The very next question for agricultural research is B, what research do we already have to support the countries and regional to address the specific issue related to achieving the goals of the CADEP Resolve Framework. What research gap exists? This, be this becomes doing research directly related to addressing specific questions to unlock or accelerated implementation, as opposed to doing research simply because research has to be done. Conference director, distinguished gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to address myself to two key issues, namely research content. First issue, research content. While there continue to be room for basic research, applied research and adaptation of new knowledge and innovation into local agricultural development system is a low hanging fruit for the continent. This also includes research into better and more informed understanding of the local circumstances and dynamic determining transformative, innovative agricultural systems. Some key issues that have emerged with direct and urgent research need includes A, climate change, especially in the context of local and system-based climate smart agriculture practices, including crops and livestock variety, able to offer increased productivity in the changing temperatures and rainfall regimes. 
B, practices and technology to enhance water productivity along the agricultural value chain, C, biofuels. It is also important to recognize that a number of research issues with direct implication for agricultural transformation are in the social and political economy field. Some of these issues seemingly outside the scope of agricultural research. Therefore, additional to enhancing research on agriculture, related socioeconomic and management aspect, the agricultural research fraternity has to innovate mechanism to collaborate and embrace relevant research from other fields. Specifically, some of these issues include energy efficiency system and technology, better understanding of local capacity to interpret and respond to, to or manage risk on agriculture, population dynamics, including aspects such as migration, especially within the continent migration and urbanization, and the industrialization aspiration and strategy which many countries are taking up. Second issue, research approaches. The approaches used to, to do research and where research is done are two sides of the same coin. Both have to be right and both aspects should be addressed in identifying national and regional agricultural research need and priority. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as I alluded to earlier, the responsibility of international research systems like the CGAIR is to support and empower national systems to do research. Here, I would like to point out that by national agricultural research system, I am referring to more than just public sector agricultural research establishment. I'm also referring to private sector systems that is already undertaking massive research. I'm talking about the many autonomous and independent establishment from think tanks through the university research program and initiatives. The collaboration between industries and public sector research system is important. Also is in, in, in validating the research team in relationship to national needs and priorities. At the same time, such collaboration connects into the same space responsibilities and capacity to generate research outcomes and mobility into implementation of those research products. Collaboration between industry, public, and uh, 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 industry business and public sector research systems cannot be left to an ad hoc arrangement. There is a need to deliberate systematic institutional arrangement with relevant legislations, support that, enab that enables robust mutual interaction between business industry and public sector research interest. The energy is in this mutual space is essential to drive active demand-driven and problem-solving agricultural research. The growing emphasis also brings to the four different and new roles that farmers and practitioners have to play in the research value chain. Farmers can no longer be treated as only beneficiary and recipient of research outcome. Agricultural research system and tools should embrace the farmers as a researcher too and integrate means to capture the innovations farmers are generating on a daily basis in their effort to find solution to the challenges they face in sustaining productive and competitive agriculture production systems. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to main, today, it remains a challenge to convince government to commitment increase financing to agricultural research. I would say the ball is in our court. What are we giving back to government 
for the financing we are asking for. As long as this is not clear, not tangible in line with the political development agenda of the countries, we are not making a, a case strong enough to compel increased public financing to agriculture. There is no argument that Africa's agricultural research needs massively new money. I would, however, put priority on A, bringing out technical sound and concise and politically compelling agricultural research agenda. It has to be clear and concrete on how research outcomes will enable the country to realize their aspirations, goals, and target as, as concretely articulated in Agenda 2063 and Malabo Declaration on Agricultural Transformation. B, optimizing returns and value of currently available financing. Remember, effective and accountable research systems are important to attract both financing and skilled human capacity into the African agricultural research systems. I have placed emphasis on national systems and capacity to advance relevant problem solving agricultural research. Within this context, an important dimension is that of regional integration objectives. This is an issue both in terms of the researchable issue as well as in the research approach used. I trust the conference will reflect on this and come up with a clear regional space that is supportive to delivering relevant research in national and regional agricultural transformation systems and initiatives. Our institutions, including FARA and the sub-regional sub research organizations, are crucial in this regard. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, let me stress some key points that result from our vision that could shape the government, the governance of the sector, including research. With the growing global uncertainty and external pressure on our natural resources, we should think of upgrading the African food security uh, strategy to a food sovereignty strategy with its political economy uh, implication at a more technical level. We certainly should promote the preferences for sustainable farming systems that are labor intensive, and we should give much more emphasis to farming as a business. And finally, change and transformation in agriculture must start from within the continent and its men and women, especially with smallholder farmers that are the majority and have the highest potential for change. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm confident that the African agricultural science agenda will contribute to forge a conducive governance for research to attain these developmental goals for agricultural transformation with clear contribution in realizing continental and global aspiration on sustainable economic growth, food nutrition security, and shared prosperity for all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to the uh, representative of NEPAT. When we started here, the Director General alluded to the fact that um, he, a gentleman was given instruction by a woman to look for a short queue. Um, it is by design that the speakers should not just be men, but they should also include the other gender. Um, but before I invite the next speaker, I think it's important that you realize that she's not just a partner, but she's also a sister.
to us in the Agriculture Research Council. Sometimes when I'm frustrated about something, I just ask her for a bit of lunch and we go and have a bit of tea somewhere. And she says, ah, you can do this and that. And just that easily, it becomes just something that's, oh, why didn't I think of that? So that helps calm my nerves. And then I get back to the office and my colleagues just see me smiling and they don't know what I just ate for lunch. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, for the next speaker agreeing to grace us uh, on this particular auspicious occasion because the kind of value that, they, that she adds both in terms of her charm but also in terms of the kind of work that they do at the Food, Agriculture, Natural Resources Policy Analysis Network is quite important for how we integrate science and society and interpret these and ensure that we actually try to inform our policymakers accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Dr. Lindiwe Majele Sibanda, the Chief Executive of the Food, Analysis, Agriculture, Natural Resources and Policy Analysis Network. Our Master of Ceremonies, my brother, the Chief Executive Officer and President of the Agriculture Research Council, allow me to ride on your excellent detail of protocol because I will not do justice to all the excellencies that are here. I respect all of you. I am grateful to the government of South Africa because without their generous gift to host our network, FANAPAN, we wouldn't be here. Thank you, DG. Convey our gratitude to His Excellency the Minister. We are grateful. The lineup of speakers, as the Master of Ceremonies has said, would not have been complete without one woman. I want to honor all my sisters and say, stand up, the show is ours. <laughs> Can I have all the women in the room be the excellencies that are honorable. I want to acknowledge, stay there. I wouldn't be doing what I do if it wasn't for my grandmother, Piki Mayembe, who infused agriculture into my blood. So for the African sisters who are standing, you are feeding everybody. For the sisters coming from all over the world, Thank you for supporting this journey. It's tough, but we are going to lead them and show them by example. Thank you very much. This is indeed a worldwide conference because the 15 centers of the CGIR are in a worldwide partnership addressing agricultural research for development. And I want to underline the D. This is a worldwide conference because GIFA is the world's agriculture research for development community, D, development. This is a worldwide conference because GCAD stands for Global Conference on the Agriculture Research for Development. I'm grateful to the Agriculture Research Council because they couldn't have been a better host for this because this is not just a partner and a premier research center our council in Africa, they are not just a partner, but they are contributing financially to the global research agenda. Thank you very much to the government of South Africa for doing Africa proud. In my address tonight, I was very clear that uh, NEPAD agency will be here and they will dwell on Africa. So I had to raise the bar and talk to global issues. In my quest of what would be the global issues that I would talk about, I was reminded that in my day job, no minister changes policy unless you give them scare factors. So I needed to think hard on what scare factors I would challenge you to think about so that in your resolutions, you make sure there is concerted effort to address them. 
I thought I should bring up some wicked problems. And let me unpack for you what wicked problems entails. These must be problems that are hard to clearly define. Wicked problems are multi-dimensional, interdependent, and multi-causal. They have unforeseen consequences. They are not stable. They are always shifting. They are socially complex, and they are associated with policy failure, and they need a framework for many players to contribute towards addressing these problems. So we have the right audience today, because you come from different subsectors. Can you help me define what those wicked problems could be? Since no one is running away, two things that are giving me sleepless nights in my policy work are climate change, which has been alluded to, but one that's really scary is malnutrition and stunting. I want to challenge you to come with me on a journey where I briefly unpack what this wicked problems mean to us. I am happy that through GCAD, we are here to build an agenda to promote effective, targeted investments and build partnerships. We are here to showcase our mutual accountabilities at all levels in the agriculture system, so as to ensure that today's agriculture research will meet the needs of the resource poor end user. I underline the resource poor end user. Allow me to unpack what climate change means to me. You are here with us, visiting from all over, at a time where we are facing one of the most daunting droughts in the history of agriculture. In this country, the president was online to speak to the community about policy interventions to mitigate against drought. It begs the question, what is the research community doing for development? We know from evidence that's been provided that where we stand now, the global average temperature has gone up by at least 0.85 degrees Celsius. And we know from science that a one degree temperature rise results in 5% decline in production of our, of, of, of our agricultural produce, particularly grain. There is evidence that we are beyond that 5% decline for Africa, 30%. And this we cannot afford because most of our economies are dependent on agriculture. And indeed, the whole world cannot afford an agriculture that is not climate smart. This begs the question, what are we doing as the research community for development? When it comes to climate smart agriculture, I think we can tick a few boxes of a few things we have done right. The CGIR, the consortium, has established a special program on climate change, agriculture, and food, and, and food security. We applaud you for that, and we want to see more. But we need to make sure that there is more on the development side. We in Africa, through NEPAD, have established a special program, the AXA, the African Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture, which is under the leadership of NEPAD and has set targets where by 2025, we hope to have introduced climate smart agriculture technologies to at least six million farming households. We are working on it and we have to deliver with the partnerships that are under this roof. At global level, there is GAXA, the Global uh, Climate Smart Agriculture Alliance, a voluntary body where, as FANPAN, we are part of that body and we are showing evidence on the ground and we've taken two African countries, Malawi and Tanzania, where we are going to lead the way by showcasing the evidence bottom up so that our policymakers can see it can be done our investors can see it can be done, 
so that at the end of the day, we have a climate smart agriculture that is the business of all farmers. Let me take you to the Paris Agreement. Whilst we celebrate that agreement, our work is not done. I hope it will be the duty of each and every one of you today to impress upon all the leaders that we need at least 55 countries to ratify the Paris Declaration. 22 April is the date that Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has set for the signing of the agreement so that it can be ratified into law. Make sure you are the messenger for your country so that they are represented in signing that agreement. Otherwise, everything we worked for on the road to Paris comes to zero. Let me touch on the other wicked problem, malnutrition. In broad terms, when we talk about malnutrition, our mind wanders to the undernourished. But malnutrition can refer to both overnutrition and undernutrition. If you're a fan of CNN like me, on 1st April, breaking news, the Lancet study report indicates that in four decades, we are experiencing obesity, threefold increase in men, and twofold increase in women. If we continue with unhealthy diets, by 2025, 18% of the male population will be obese, and 21% of the women population will be obese. Ladies and gentlemen, this was on April 1. It's not April Fool's joke, it is real. We need an agriculture that delivers healthy diets, and this is a challenge that we face. We've done well on climate smart agriculture. My challenge to the partnership is that we need a program for nutrition sensitive agriculture. This is particularly daunting for us in Africa. As we speak, we have 159 children under five who are stunted globally. Out of all the continents, Africa is the only continent where the numbers are not declining. We are sitting at 27 million of children under five who are stunted. The wicked problem and the scary problem for me as a mother is that when we talk about stunting, it's not the height by age, it's the brain that is underdeveloped. Policymakers, can you imagine a generation in Africa 30 years from now? These children will survive, they will be the leaders, but they will have half the intellectual capacity to lead not only their families, but their countries. This is a global phenomenon that we cannot ignore. And I want to challenge the research community. In as much as we have established a program on climate smart agriculture through CCAFs, it's only fitting that we consider a program on nutrition sensitive agriculture. I know that we will say all our 15 centers have a bit of nutrition. We have protein maize, we have zinc fertilizer, we have uh, ill improving the, the yield productivity of our animals and the milk. But is that milk being consumed? Are we designing development programs that will ensure that the uptake of the products and the products have no leakages in the value chain? We can close those leakages as we undertake our research, right from the germplasm that we use, from the production technologies, from the harvesting and storage, from the protection of the produce from aflatoxin, from the processing where we can fortify our produce. But at the end of the day, we should make a pledge to make sure that the food we deliver on the table is nutrient dense, but also we bring the diversity that will allow complementary feeding of nutrients. Currently, two billion people globally are facing deficiencies of vitamins and minerals. This is because the food we have on the table is either short of those nutrients, micronutrients, or they cannot afford it because we have made good food a privilege of the rich. 
we need to revisit the puzzle. We need to stimulate the demand for good food by educating our constituencies that the best pharmacy is the farm and not the medical field. There are not many of us who understand what a thousand days means. When I came across the term, I was clear this was a term for the medical field. But I now realize that we are what we are because from day one of conception in your mother's tummy, day one began, and the thousand days was when you reached your second birthday. And if the nutrition is compromised at that stage, everything else we try and do comes to zero in reversing the malnutrition challenge that that child will face. All the disease burdens will what the child will succumb to are 50% attributed to malnutrition during the first 1,000 days. I therefore challenge the agriculture community to break out of the silo where we've been trained into silos and then attack these wicked problems that will make us deliver on the wicked problems that our policymakers are grappling with and trying to address through budgets in health, through budgets in agriculture, but it's all about people and it's about healthy people and we need to invest in that. Come with me on a journey, a bright one to Swaziland. In Swaziland, when I first began my work, I came across Farmer Happy Shongwe. In 2002, Farmer Shongwe in Lubombo district in Swaziland was facing the most devastating drought where she had to sell all her chickens, all her goats, because she had not even planted and there are many happies at this time who have not been able to put any crop in this region in Africa. In 2005, the development community came in with support on varieties that had been developed by the CG, with support from FAO and the World Food Program. Happy was able to get food aid, but she was also able to get training on how to be a seed farmer. 2005, Happy graduated and started producing legume seed for her local community. She was able to get the seeds tested, packaged, and sold to the local community. She then realized the demand was increasing, and she contracted her neighboring farmers to co-produce with her. As I speak 13 years later, Happy is a successful farmer who is benefiting from a regional seed harmonization policy, which has established that in the region of Southern Africa, if you develop a seed variety, you get it tested, you get it certified, you get it registered, you are able to export it throughout the 15 SADAG countries. It took 15 years for us to pass that policy regionally, but Happy Shongwe is now celebrating as her seeds are now planted in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, places she has never been to Thanks to research for development and thanks to that investment. We need more happy faces and we need these examples in the face of our policymakers so that they can invest in agriculture. But right next door to happy is Mary. Mary received food aid. She had sold her chickens, she had sold her goats, but because she's nobody anymore, she did not qualify for the training and now She's permanently a welfare case. Who is going to lift Mary out of that poverty? What are we doing? Because when you talk to minister in agriculture, their challenge is how do we get policies that do not leave anyone behind? This requires answers. And I want to believe through climate smart agriculture, through nutrition sensitive agriculture, we will at least do one thing for Mary. Her children won't be stunted. Her children will be receiving nutrient-dense diets. That we can do collectively by influencing policies. Let me take you to my world of policy making. As agriculture research community, we always celebrate when we publish our papers, when we handpick a few partners that we can work with and we say we are working with communities. But one thing I now know for sure is that if your work does not feed into policy, with any change in government, you are starting from zero. 
with every end of project, we are looking for the next donor to start another project. I want to challenge you to work on the D, the development component, by investing in three things. The three things at FANPAN that we talk about in policy are the message, the messenger, and the platforms. You are doing 50% well on the message because you are investing in research. But can we get that research to be informed by people affected by the problems? Then we know it's relevant to them. So let's strengthen the agenda setting for the research that we do. The second component is the messenger. There is no policymaker who is going to go to a library or a peer-reviewed journal to get policy advice. There are even fewer who are going to read the policy briefs that we produce. Their best audience are the constituencies that vote for them. So can you invest in HAPI, whom we took to SADAC, to the Ministers of Agriculture meeting, to do a testimony? I hear at the Hill in the United States, they testify at the Hill so that the policymakers can hear them. Can we researchers penetrate that space and find the people who will be our messengers? Because unless the people who are affected by the problem interface with the policymakers, our research will be projects and our messages will be in publications and they will not inform policies. Let's invest both financially and in tools that will allow us to equip. Most of these people are brilliant people. Yes, they may be uneducated, but what is education? It's not just the classroom. They need knowledge and they have knowledge. What they need is the packaging of the messages so that they can convey them effectively. So I want to challenge you today that invest in, in innovative ways that will help those affected by the problems we are dealing with, the wicked problems of climate change and malnutrition. At FANPAN, we've come up with Theatre for Policy Advocacy, where we take the researchers to the community with the research messages. We then train the communities professionally in theatre, and we hire platforms like this one, where the policymakers come and enjoy a role play by community. We then segregate the participants after the showcase play to dialogue on policy issues. And through that process, we've been able to change policies in Malawi on inheritance of land, policies on marketing in Mozambique, and we're still doing more. And I want to challenge you, take it to the people because we don't want to leave anyone behind. Now, who are these people we are talking about? I've alluded to women, and we've got to have special programs for women because they are overburdened with the multiple roles that they have to play. I want to commend the youth program, YPAD, the Young Professionals for, in Agriculture Research and Development, who are celebrating their 10 years this year. Congratulations. You are the future. <laughs> Here in South Africa, they say nothing for us without us. We cannot talk about climate smart agriculture without you. We cannot talk about nutrition sensitive agriculture without you. I'm past the baby making stage. You are the ones who are going to give birth to children who need to be nutritionally well fed so that they can take the world's challenges head on. When we talk about leaving no one behind, we are emphasizing the need to work together. We are emphasizing the need to work differently. We are emphasizing the need to respect partnerships. It's not about money. It's got to be win-win. It's also about transparency, where the agenda from the onset is owned by both. When we fail, we all fail. When we win, we want to be at the table where the winners sit. I am happy to see the discussions for GCAD 3 centered on the five key thrusts that are scaling up for research to impact, demonstrating results and attracting investment, keeping science relevant and future focused, sustaining the business of farming and ensuring better rural futures. The GCAD path so far has dwelt on the roadmap and has also dwelt on the partnerships. This is a special GCAD 3 because we want to take a hook from the successes of the Sustainable Development Goals. I think, ladies and gentlemen, 
we are standing at a vantage point where, unlike the Millennium Development Goals, which dealt about us and them, the rich and the poor, the developed and underdeveloped, the sustainable development goals are about leaving no one behind. We are in it together. Let's make sure we support the Malabo Declaration that has already made it commitment that they will reduce stunting to 10% and underweight by 5% by 2025. Let's support the African Climate Smart Agriculture Alliance that has made a commitment to reach 6 million farmers. Let's support GAXA that is pledging and showcasing that through the research we are doing, we can inform our constituencies to be climate smart. It's not just about yes, we can, but rather it's about leaving no one behind. So it's better said together we can. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I said, once your mother has said it, you better behave. Um, so as sister has said it, uh, and we wish to thank her for, the, for all of that, and we thank her for the fact that she's been able to wrap up and really give us a good summary of all the key things that come out. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey has begun. It has begun because we now need to engage with each other, exchange information, and actually come up with concrete, very clear resolutions that are actually going to enable us to implement things going forward. It shouldn't just be talk shop. Um, as, as we were preparing for this particular uh, meeting, uh, I was interviewed by uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the media, and they said, well, but this is a third global conference on agricultural research. What did the other ones do? Why are you having a third one? Are you going to have another one next in the future? What's the results for that? So I think it's important that we demonstrate that there will be results arising out of this, law, the, 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 this event today. Hence, I'm saying it is the journey has begun. Today is only just the beginning. It is just the opening. Allow me to recognize in the room, ladies and gentlemen, the Assistant Director General for the FAO, Dr. Ren Wang, the Executive Director for the Forum for, for Research in, uh, in, 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 in in, in Africa, for agricultural research in Africa, Dr. Yemi Akin Bamijo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the uh, opening ceremonies tonight. Um, the, uh, we will be ushered out uh, by some of the, the ladies and gentlemen that are wearing the white uh, shirts with G-card on them. Uh, please follow them towards the, uh, uh, the, the reception venue. Um, uh, which is in the Serengeti Lapa. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time and your patience. Uh, please enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>